in an earlier video about uh, how to make an amperimeter for high currents, say between 10 and 30 ampere, I showed this circuit, but it didn't work. Well, I had to know better, and uh, when we look, for instance, here inside a multimeter, such a thing, you can see here the shunt. That's the copper wiring, or I don't know uh, whatever material it is, in the middle. This is the shunt, and um, the microparameter is connected to the shunt. In this case, of course, a digital uh, microparameter. In detail, perhaps. No, it doesn't work. Okay, this is the shunt. Anyway, when you want to make a high ampere meter, these are the principles. And I've made many uh, high uh, current ampere meters in the past. Here we have the source, here we have the load, the current flows in this direction or in that direction, that doesn't matter much. Here's a shunt resistor, and parallel to that shunt resistor, there is a microparameter or a milliamperameter. And the pointer from the meter moves uh, in relation to the voltage drop on the shunt resistor. I have found that when you make this circuit, uh, such a microparameter is very, very sensitive. And it could be that the pointer moves far too much, or your meter is even damaged. So this is perhaps, when it goes to real high currents, say 30 ampere or so, a better circuit. Here, um, um, series resistor in series with the microparameter, and these meters are often approximately 1600 ohms, or 1000 ohms, or 800 ohms. So that are the standard values for these meters. Ohm's law can be applied here. And I've also found out that with soldering, when you solder all the connections here on this board, even on this board, the soldering can get so hot that it melts down. That's not the meaning from our measuring circuit. So it's better to use clamps like these ones and of course remove the plastic in that case. And these ones remove the plastic and then um, it all uh, can work properly. So to the next page, that is what I have already told, and when you want to make such a circuit, this could be a good setup, um, a non-flammable board from a non-flammable material, here the input, thick wire, here the load, use heavy crocodile clips here, not the small ones that I have, for instance, here. They are far too small for such a high current application. And of course, uh, you know how they look like when you have a car and start cables. These kind of crocodile clips must be used here. Thick wire. And the current again goes from here to here or in the other direction, doesn't matter much. Here again, the explained circuit and here the shunt resistor, and that can be copper or steel wire. I write here iron wire, but I mean steel wire, and this is also steel wire. And as I've told earlier, and here I've calculated it a little bit, uh, what the resistance from such a shunt can be. The microparameter in this example is approximately 1000 microvolt, and that means that this is the value from the shunt resistor at 30 ampere, so very, very low. And 
Um, here again that example. This will also be a very very low resistance here for the shunt. You have to experiment it all out. It's not very difficult. And um, I wish you luck when you want to make such a circuit.